Dr. Dodds today. Thank you very much to uh, Greg Bruner, Coach Gillespie for coming out, our distinguished guests, and of course uh, Mayor Kitty Weldon, and my dad's here today. So if y'all want ribs, we're doing ribs this afternoon. So y'all come on out, we can do that. Uh, my name is Brad Heidman. I do the morning show on KSTV, and uh, opportunity to sit with Kevin Cobb. Thank y'all for coming out. If we could give him a warm welcome. So Buffalo, huh? Buffalo. All right. Worked out a pretty sweet deal in March uh, with them. Did you have any trepidation? When they were looking at you, was that an agent thing that, that put you in Buffalo, or was it more about maybe you not liking the fit there in Arizona and wanting to change? How did that How did that transpire? Well, obviously, uh, Arizona released me right. and brought in the new coaching regime. And so, uh, like I was explaining before to some of the guests, that it was the first time in my career I've actually gotten to choose where I wanted to go, which was a unique experience. It's like going back to leaving high school and going to college again, right. you know. And, uh, so I really wanted to be a place, be in a place where I was committed to the offense, committed to what we were trying to do, and believing in it. Because some of the situations I've been thrown into before, um, I, I wasn't on the same page offensively and offensive minded as they were. So um, if you can't believe in what you're doing, then, then you're in the wrong place. And, and um, money took a side took a side seat to what I was trying to do offensively, and, and like I said, believing in what I was doing. So it was more about what the team offered you and, and how your paradigm of what an offense should be exactly. than it was location or team record or anything like that. Absolutely. I mean, I've, I've had to move all over the country so far, you know, and I'm, I'm used to that. My family's used to it. And right now it's all about winning. And, and it always has been. But um, obviously at this stage of my career, uh, time is limited. And the right. chance to start again is, is, you know, it may never come around again. So I wanted to be in a place that I felt like that was, uh, you know, that I had that opportunity and, and, and had a chance to succeed. When it talks about you being uh, a placeholder, is that a placeholder on the roster? Or <clears throat> because I, I've seen things saying, okay, Cobb's going to be the starting quarterback. Um, the, the quarterback is, I guess the previous starting quarterback in Buffalo was injured. You're coming in. And is, does that mean that you're going to take a starting position? Or are, are you on the roster? And if things go right, then you're the starter. Could you explain that? Yeah, sure. Well, Ron Fitzpatrick was the, was the quarterback last year. He was in a very uh, similar situation I, that I was. We both had six-year contracts, long-term contracts. Um, new regime comes in, changes things up. He went to Tennessee. The door was open for myself. Uh, they had Tavares Jackson there, who's a good a good quarterback. Um, they just released him right about the end of the, the mini camp there. And then they drafted a kid, uh, E.J. Manuel, in the first round. Um, so obviously, you know, they're, they're committed to him long term. And the thing for me is I don't get involved with that. I don't care about that because I just came from a place in Arizona where they drafted Matt Miner fifth or sixth or wherever he was, 11th overall. And then Kurt Warner came in and took him to the Super Bowl and was a pro bowler for three years. So if you go out there and you play and you take care of your business, it doesn't really matter about the politics that are involved. And uh, and right now it's an open competition. It's been like that with the Eagles. It's been like that with, with Arizona. And... Uh, it's, it's a situation I'm used to, you know, and, and uh, I'm not afraid to go out there and compete, and that's what the NFL is all about. Does that take you back to almost the, the high school side of it, that people are competing for a position and the best guy who goes out there? Does that, has that affected your mindset as a quarterback with everything that you've gone through, with what happened in Philadelphia, you get a concussion, Vic comes in, he gets hurt, you come back in, then you go to Arizona. Do you feel like that you're a more mature quarterback and, and this is – a place where you're mentally and spiritually ready for this? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I feel a, a peace and an ease about being where I'm at in my career, and um, I feel like I've seen it all. You okay. know, I mean, success, the doldrums, injuries, sitting on the bench, coming back in as a backup, a lot of different situations that I've had to deal with, you know. And so um, that's nice to be able to lean on all, all those all those situations as you move forward because whatever you see, it's not a surprise. It's nothing new. And and really, uh, this is a very young team that I'm with, so I'm one of the veterans, and guys are leaning on me, and, and that's kind of a role that I, I like. I mean, I enjoy being in that seat, and uh, and I feel like I have a lot to offer those young guys, and I'll do whatever I can for EJ as well. It makes it so that you're in control of your own destiny. Right. And then you have an opportunity to lead by example with those uh, younger players. What does Mama say about the move? What was her input? You being, uh, you know, a husband and, and a daddy of, of two beautiful girls, how did that come into play? I mean, is that something, because I know in my house, all final decisions are made by the CEO and it's not me. 
she's very supportive. I mean, everybody here that knows her, they know what she's like and know what she's about. Stevenville girl, Stevenville native, and um, you know, she's. I mean, when we first got married, it was me and her. Boom, we moved away to Philadelphia. You know, and um, first I drove her to Houston, then I drove her to Philadelphia. I'm sure her parents were wondering what the heck is my my brother and my son-in-law getting my daughter into, but. Um, Again, she's open-minded everything. She understands the business. She understands what it's all about. As long as it's making me happy and it's, it's where I want to be, then she's happy. But Arizona was a hard place to, to leave lifestyle-wise because it's very similar to Texas. We enjoy the hot weather. We enjoy the heat. We enjoy um, the laid-back lifestyle that it offered. So we really wanted it to, have, to work out there. But God has a different plan, and so we'll follow it. When you mentioned um, God and, and, and your faith and you saying earlier that it felt right, it felt it felt easy. Is that something that you prayerfully considered and was like, you know, God, is this is this where you want my family to be? It's where I want to go? Absolutely. And I've always had faith in that. I've never questioned the injuries. I've never questioned uh, being unsuccessful in certain situations and then being successful in certain situations, you know. Um, there were times in Philadelphia I said, hey, is this where I want to be? And then I played well and then had a, you know, had a contract extension and I'm wondering, man, does this suit my personality? Well, God had a plan and he got me traded and I kind of went to Arizona and learned a lot, you know, and and uh, hopefully it's all leading to a lot of success in, in my new place, in my new home. So how are you going to deal with that cold weather? Coat? That's a good question. I'm not really <laughs> sure about that. I make this stuff called sweet sweat. You can just rub all over yourself and you can't feel anything on your skin, so that's what I'm kind of leaning towards. Really? Yeah. We'll see. But there's no other, there's no other option, so you got to just deal with it, you know. So when do you head off? Uh, about a week. Okay. Yeah. What do you plan on doing between now and then? Tying up a bunch of loose ends, you okay. know, I mean, it, you, when you're gone for five to six, seven months at a time, you know, depending on how long it is, you've got a lot of stuff that you've got to wrap up and get ready, and uh, so we've we've obviously made a home back here in North Texas, and, and um, we'll have to shut the doors and turn on a few lights and then and leave it be and hope it's the same way when we get back. What's your goal for your, your personal goal for you this season, and follow that up with what would be um, your goal for the team? I think that really... Uh, Numbers aren't even a part of it anymore. For me, obviously it's about winning. But I'm ready just to play injury-free and play up to my ability. I think that's the, the number one key for me. I know that I have the ability to do it. I've seen it on film. I know whenever I've got the zone on the field. Um, and, I, and I've dominated at times on the field. And um, so if I could just find that stretch where I'm consistently in the right mindset, confident, injury-free, I know that the success will come. So. Um, for me, it's about just finding that groove and finding that, that mindset, like I said before, you know, and, uh, and I know the rest of it will follow. And for our team, I think the sky's the limit. We're young. We've got a really good defensive coordinator. He's from the Jets, and everybody knows what the Jets have been doing as far as all their different looks and styles. Um, offensively, we're going to do something brand new to the NFL, um, which is going to be exciting, and, and uh, it looks really good. It's inconsistent at times because we're young and because it's new, so we'll have our hiccups. We'll, we'll have to go through the valleys of trying to learn different, you know, a new system and doing something different. But I think the, the upside is, is uh, you know, the sky. So hopefully that's where it goes. All right. God bless you. Thank you Thanks so much, much for taking the time. Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Cobb of the Buffalo Bills. The, the thing that struck me about what Kevin just talked about was the importance of his, his mindset and his attitude. And if you listen closely, two things that he touched on was, was his, his attitude and confidence in his ability and, and, uh, and, and trust in God. And those two things, I think, are the key. He'll tell you that it set him up for success, and I think that reflects how we as a community uh, prepare the youth for, for their, their roles in life. And that's one of the things that makes Stevenville such a special place is our focus on youth. And yeah, Kevin is, is now calling himself a veteran in the NFL. But he's a byproduct of how youth are developed here in Stevenville, and and that that's just something that just just uh, makes you so proud to be a part of. It. And uh, I think it's something that uh, we can all be uh, be proud of as we think about Kevin and wish him well in his career. Outstanding, sir. Great to see you. All right. All right. Thank, thank, you. thank, thank you for everything. Mayor, pretty well. Um, seven on seven wrapped up. A yes. little, a little quicker than, than, than maybe you'd hoped, or, or how'd that work out? 
Oh, I think, uh, you know, obviously any time that we step out on the field, regardless of whether it's 7-on-7 uh, seven seven or Friday night, Thursday night, Tuesday night, uh, whatever it is, you want to obviously win. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we do 7-on-7 seven seven to get ourselves better for the, for the big time had it up games and things of that nature. And so uh, we really had gotten everything that we wanted to get out of 7-on-7 seven seven and, and headed in a very good direction where it's healthy. Background loud enough for me to hear that we were we were undefeated in America. <laughs> and Jeff yeah. wanted me to throw that out. Good. Well, God bless you and your family. Um, thank you for taking the time with, with the coaching show. We'll start up the coaching shows full time here in a couple weeks, every Friday morning at 10 a.m. Coffee with Coach. And uh, look forward to much success and some great health. And look forward to it as well. And thank certainly want to wish uh, Kevin all the all the luck and health and, and everything. I'm going to tell you one. What you see with Kevin is what you get. I mean, I've, uh, I've been fortunate enough to have been here as a coach when he was playing and uh, you know, can certainly call him a friend. And uh, we keep up with each other. I know he's certainly interested in the Yellow Jackets and the wins every Friday night. And we see texts and calls and things of that nature. We're certainly interested in, in his success and stuff. But uh, he is certainly, what you see is what you get. I mean, I've been been visiting with him at the highest of highs and the, and the lowest of lows from the profession, and, and he's still the same guy. Character is certainly second to none. So we we are certainly proud of him uh, here, the way he represents us. and gives back to our community and to our youth. Well, I know that you're interested in wins and losses, but I know you as a godly man, that most importantly is that you're training our young men to be difference makers in their homes, to raise them as, you know, people talk about we're not raising boys. That's exactly right. We're raising godly husbands and godly men yes, to sir. put back out into the world. No doubt. And thank you for being a positive influence on our kids. Coach. Thank you very, very much. much. All right, thank you very much. Thanks for taking the first question. So now, Rick said that we're, everybody needs to pick the Dodge or Jeep or Chrysler of your choice, and we're all going to go on a little test drive. So, Greg. I appreciate you. Uh, look forward to uh, talking about this experience Monday morning on the morning show with uh, my co-host Joanna. And hope everybody has a blessed weekend. Thank you.